The sport of off-road racing is full of incredible stories, wild characters, legends, and even villains. We cover it all on offroadracer.com, but there's only so much we can put down in an article. Sometimes we have to dig a little deeper, and that means sitting down with some of our industry's most influential characters and hitting record. Welcome to the Off-Road Racer Podcast, a Mad Media production, made exclusively for offroadracer.com. Each month, we'll go beyond the dirt into the homes, shops, and lives of the most interesting and game-changing icons of our sport. You'll hear about their history, success, failure, and everything in between as we pull back the curtain and reveal the stories of their lives. I'm your host, Matt Martelli, and this is the Off-Road Racer Podcast. Welcome to the Off-Road Racer Podcast. I'm Matt Martelli, and I'm joined by longtime friend uh, Jason McNeil. What's up, Jason? Oh, just uh, love being in the studio with you, Matt. It's been a little bit since we've seen each other, and uh, man, it's been a wild, wild week of text, of phone calls. Uh, last week, we won the Baja 500, That's so... It's just uh, honestly, honestly, I, I, you know, we've we won the Baja 500 before, but I think this third overall just kind of sent everything over the moon. The moon. It's just people are people are pretty impressed. We just did our we just did our thing, right? Like it was a Baja 500 that we went into um, starting second, so I knew we had some good chances uh, of being out in the front and staying out of the carnage in this trophy truck spec class, but. No, we, like I said, I can't think enough, you know, everybody that's reached out to me this week and the, yeah. the attention and, and, you know, it's, it's really, really uh, rewarding to, um, to hear from everybody. Well, I think, yeah, I mean, first off, you, you grew up in this culture and you have a lot of, a lot of friends, a lot of supporters and, you know, obviously your business too, you're connected to a lot of people. So I, th- I think that when somebody wins, that's like one of us. It's 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 cool. It's even more special because you know obviously there's a lot of wealthy people that are in our sport, which is great. But um, you're, 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 you've made everything that you've done, and you, you know the other thing too is you climbed up the ladder. You know, t- talk a little bit about um, you know how you got into off road racing. Well, you know it, it it started all back in the class seven days. You know, I guess before that. Uh, my my dad uh, he used to own uh, Kentucky Fried Chickens down in Mexico. Um, when they do when they, when they were doing that back in I don't know we'll call it this mid sixties and seventies. Uh, a lot of people know uh, my uncle Perry more than my dad uh, Perry McNeil. And anyway, it, because my dad you know they they had this business down there and it, they started doing off road racing. And uh, Perry was kind of in, in charge of, of, of doing the, you know, ba- basically the, the race car prep and, and, and that kind of thing. And they, they raced together back in the Parnelli Jones days and, um, you know, Mickey Thompson. And, and, and anyway, that, that's really where it started. I, I, was, I was taking all those races and britches and, and diapers and, and really um, got, got to see my dad and my uncle do, do a lot of off-road racing in the early years. And... You know, being out in East County, El Cajon, you know, that, that's really like the hub, you know, of this off-road racing. I mean, it, it, there's all the businesses out there. Uh, back then it was, you know, wide, wide open. And I remember, you know, turning 16 and getting my first Ford Ranger. And I thought I was so cool because I had a, you know, KC lights on the front bumper. And I'm like, you know, hitting, hitting uh, grass fields and going and seeing how high I could jump it and breaking it half the time and ticking off my dad. And, uh, and so, you know, we went into high school and like I said, you know, we were, you, everybody kind of knows the McNeils. And like I said, my Perry, my uncle Perry was still racing at the time. And, uh, it's something that, you know, we went, we went and watched him and, and I knew it's something I wanted to do. My dad had a bad accident and, and unfortunately, uh, quit off-road racing, but he was a, definitely a big fan and supporter and we, we we'd go down there and, and help my uncle and uh and really when i had the opportunity to get in i, I always knew i was a motorhead you know we, we you know I, a lot of people say mo- motocross super tr- cross and r- racing the dirt dirt bikes right really transitions and in, into really being able to to read terrain and that kind of thing and that's i really 
growing up, um, you know, I have four younger brothers. We were always competitive. And, uh, you know, we started racing at Star West and Barona and, and Paris. Just, you know, not really got super, super good, like on a pro level, but we were, you know, winning on the novice level. And, uh, and anyway, it, it, it just transitioned. Like, I wanted to be in four wheels. I, I unfortunately had a friend that broke his, broke his neck when I was like 20, 21. Uh, a guy that we, Ryan Needles, that we went and we uh we were doing a lot of riding together and that's that's really the day that i hung it scared up. you yeah. yeah it really scared me i'm like you know what you know i i i i cherish cherish those 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 times of you know early on going on the dirt bike but i honestly i i haven't ridden a dirt bike since yeah i i i'm almost similar like in, in my early 20s i was actually art director over at seat racing and uh we ride every day you know one of the guys that was way better than me i was never that good on bikes like i just i was afraid you know i was it was really funny too it was weird because like i skated and i skated vert i definitely wasn't afraid of physically getting hurt but on a bike i was yeah and you know this guy had a bad crash and he i you know this he was pro level and i watched him basically shred off of his calf and he still has a limp and walks with a cane to this day. And he, he was in his twenties and I'm like, man, if that guy got hurt that bad, like I suck. So I better get in a cage. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I had some really close calls. Right. And, and it's something that, like I said, I, I, I th- th- those were memories, you know, right. Growing sure. up and, and, and I n- wanted my kids to experience that part of it, but I don't, you know, I've, I've, done some uh racing with my with my younger younger kids and boys and and but not off road no, i'm sorry not not dirt bike racing you know we we got some of these surrons that are two wheel uh things and, and really we used to be able to just drive from my house right so it was easy nowadays you know there is no riding around the house there you know we're, we're where i live like i said east county blossom valley area we would get home from school fire up the dirt bike and we'd be gone for hours now you know, you you got to go and get drive or you put it in the back of the truck and and go. Oh yeah, drive I mean, to, I, to do something like I that. I went to W D Hall Elementary, right in downtown El Cajon, and even then it was like we rode around on three wheelers, even on the streets. You know, different time. Yeah, did a totally different time. So that that really that's really got got me the off road itch is that on a two wheel, um, and then from there, you know, I, when I was going into high school, I. You know, took a uh, auto shop. I was very, very like into you know automobiles and mechanics and working that you know working on them. Um, my dad not having a lot of money growing up. You know, he taught us how to do everything. I mean, I was I I can take change a semi truck tire kind of like though you know how they do it in Mexico with it with a you know hammer with with a flat head and and break break the bead and. And if you can't break the bead, you roll it off, you know, put it in front of the, the truck tire and you run it over and, you know, get some tire irons and and uh, and, and change them that way. But really, like I said, um, you know, I, I I got into welding class when I when I graduated high school. I knew back then there, you know, <clears throat> nowadays, like we talked to you, like I was talking or heard you talk about earlier, you can go you can go get a UTV. You can go buy your race car. Sure. Back then when I was getting started you had to build your own race car and i think that's one thing that you know you guys didn't really talk about in the vintage with with old norm is you know when i when i my first vehicle you know we it was hand built class yeah. seven open was it the best no was it the prettiest welds no but back then if it you wanted a race you you had to build your own vehicle there wasn't a lot of you know off-road cars for sale right so we built that first class seven. I ended up building a second class seven, and uh, where we—that's that's really where everything took off, you know. Um, was that with that seven class, the, the second class seven? I it, think in one, in one year alone, I think we raced twenty eight times, and we we won twenty two, and we broke the rest. Nice. <laughs> so that was uh you know back in 
back then we were doing score and code and record. I was just re- trying to race everything I could. Sure. You know? But yeah, it's just a passion of mine. Obviously my off road business. Um, yeah. So when, when did fiber, so a lot of people don't know, like you, you also own Fiberworks, right? Which is the preeminent company that does body work, you know, uh, both for race vehicles, but also for street vehicles as well. Yeah. So when, when my mom, my, when my dad and uh, my uncle got into uh, off road racing, they had to go, they had to buy fiberglass parts. And back then, you know, Autofab was like really the only one back in the day. Um, and so, you know, I remember building this, this class seven and I, and I really wanted it to be uh, different than all the others. And that's when we started hand shaping a one piece. Like back then there was no one piece hoods. There was hoods and fenders separate. And I'm like, you know what? We could make this. We could make this one piece. You know, it'd be so much easier to work on. We could take it off. The whole thing could come off. And uh, and and really, that's my my dad back in the day. He was pretty pretty savvy entrepreneur, right? And uh, and and so he he actually used to to make the rollerblade helmets out of fiberglass and uh, and the water and balloon launcher. You know, all kinds of diff- different things. I'm sure, but. Anyway, um, because he we had some fiberglass manufacturing going on um, in the shop down there, I'm like, you know what? Let's let's make our own hood. So, we I remember still to this day we we showed up to the first race, and back then you know the Ford Ranger. I mean everybody had a you know Ranger platform that they were building, and uh, and everybody was coming up to me like, where do I get that hood? I'm like, well, it's not really for sale. I mean I I did it for my. Well, I want it. Well, how much? And and that's really the what started my business and you know having the i mean it's changed completely now right i mean we're doing everything on cad and everything but back then you know you you had a look we were shaping all the fenders by hand and and it's not it it, it's it's it was cool right because kind of like norm talked to you talked about in the the the, with you previously is it's like it's an art you know sure like these paint jobs that these guys are doing and stuff like that like people wanted to buy our stuff because of the look and that's really you know it's it's uh it's it was cool right we we, you know you wanted to look cool and have a different look uh it's completely different than what what autofab was spitting out at the time and and, well uh, autofab was they were old school right right. so they'd come from that era of like buggy rounded you know rounded edges and everything was real flowy and stuff and it looks like it's from the 70s yeah, right exactly and I, I love john honestly without without john and he's you know i like his class seven back in the day i'm like oh, you know i want it to be like them i mean john i actually you know i go to the swap meet on saturdays and he's a good he's a he's a he's a swap meet goer when i'm in town by the way and uh i really i really admire john because he's uh even though you know i i feel like you know I came in the business and and we we're competitors sure um that's one thing with john at autofab is like there's no hard feelings right like he's like you know what i'm so proud of you and this and that like you know of what of of what we've done and and really kind of took off what what he started in the past and doing all the old stuff sure we really we really were competitors maybe a little bit at, at, a, at a certain point but then we kind of took to, took off and did all the new stuff and he he uh, kept doing, you know, he's obviously does fabrication too or whatever, but he's he's doing a lot more of the older stuff and we kind of took off with the new stuff. Yeah, it, I mean, I remember, you know, because again, like being, you know, a graphic designer and looking at all the race vehicles and just being like, oh man, these look like crap, right? And then I remember, you know, some of your first hoods and people were going crazy, you know? Oh, and, yeah. and I and I was, I think it was Jerry Camberg, is like oh yeah, and I'm gonna get a Fiberworks, you know, hood and blah blah blah, and I'm like, what's that? <laughs> and then you know, you know, that's where it, it, it was born, and I love that. I mean, look, how lucky are we to be a part of this culture? Number one, but also to have it be our businesses. Really, on, honestly, you know, I'm I'm very very fortunate and blessed when it comes to that, right? Because uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's got its stresses. You know, I wish I wish this is all handmade stuff, right? It's not a stamp part. That's that's the challenge that I I like I think about the business is it's it's a it's a it's a it's a product that you try your best to control because every single one's different right yes you have molds but you're laying fiberglass well you're laying gel coat and then fiberglass and when you pop these things out of these molds you still have to 
detail those parts. Sure. And, and, and you know, along the detail process, things can you know go sideways. Things can be you know ground down too much, and then all of a sudden now your you know your your panels aren't fitting trucks, and then you get the phone calls. Hey, my stuff's not fitting, and and so. You know, it's it's a uh, it's it's its own animal. Like I said once again, I, I wish it was like a product that was perfect every time. We really strive to do it and make it perfect. But at the end of the day, it's a you know it's a hand hand built part. But it's uh, yeah, fiber fiber fireworks have has come a long a long ways. Um, you know, I started when I was twenty. I'm forty five. I I started in my dad's garage. You know, now we're next to Toyota and uh, to Tecate, Mexico. We we have set, you know, we float anywhere from 70 to 80 employees, 40,000 square foot shop. Wow. And, uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's pretty wild, really. I mean, it's that's where all the magic happens. We have a facility here in El Cajon. We do our, you know, it's a lot more boring, right? We just take orders and ship the stuff out. But, you know, if you ever have a chance to come down to our Takati facility, it's uh, it's pretty wild. I, I definitely will come down. I actually was talking to a friend um, yesterday, and he bought. Oh God, I can't remember the name of one of the old BMX companies, right? And so he's making twenty nine inch frames and resurrecting this. This I think it's it's CM. Uh, um, I've heard of it? Yeah, and so. Um, Sal Barbier is a, a ex pro skateboarder, super super rad dude, and so he was talking to me about how like he doesn't want to make the frames in China, and I'm like, well, there's this guy Abdelli <laughs> Lopez, and they have a shop in Ducati. I'll go, I'll take you down there, and go just just for the food alone. Oh, yeah. You know? oh yeah, how can you not go to Ducati without picking up a, ta- a taco on the way in or out? Yeah, for sure. there's the killer restaurants down there, and. And uh, yeah, I spend some time down Guadalupe Valley too. It's a good excuse to drink some wine. But no, I'll definitely come down. I'd love to check it out. And you know, and, and I dig the relationship between you know, same thing with off road between us and Baja. Oh yeah, no, there's really there's nothing like Baja. You know, I uh, I really admire it. It's it's funny. I just texted him last night. The the uh, uh, what's his name chassis that what the guy that puts Bryce Menzies videos on I'm drawing a blank um, oh oh Justin uh, Justin yeah yeah man you know when you when you see that stuff from a, the helicopter up there and see some of like their their angle of where they're filming from from the chopper I'm like is that even on a racer do we drive through that but it's just beautiful it's you know it's in the, with all, all the rain we've had and how green it is it's well like, and Justin in particular he does a great job but um you know they bought a camera system that is killer I'm sure I'm sure you know all about it yeah and, and well it was it was cool because Steve's like well what 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 should I get? And I'm like, you know, I'm thinking like me, like broke dick guy, like (laughs) here's, you know, how to rig it. And he goes, no, 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 that's not the question, Matt. The question is what is the best one? So they bought that one. And and consequently you see the, the content that Bryce and Justin Chasen put, put out. It's beautiful. And, And I think it's, I really enjoy it from a visual standpoint, because I think that if people see that, it's like holy shit! Yes. Like we're allowed to race through this stuff. Well, that's exactly where I was telling him is is if there's anybody that wants to know what we do and to give them the best idea of what we do, right? In a in a in a video clip, it's by far no hands down. You show them one of those videos, and it's like, where are you guys doing this? There's, yeah. there's not there's there's no place in the well, world. It's just. And what I really like about it too is like a lot of times when we're making videos, you know, we're we're editing quite a bit of stuff down, and he tends to like let his shots play out, and uh, you know, I I love it. Yeah. I just turn it on, and like yeah, zone no, out it, on it it. 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 it starts to rate. There's no talking. There's no. It's like. Yeah. All right, this is flying around in Sonata, and then it's the start line, and then it's like got, off-road it's, porn. <laughs> it, it, it is. It, it's 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 wild. It looks like I said, we're 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 very very fortunate to have Baja. You right? I mean, I mean, I'm I'm sure you know you're, you 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 do know your your promoter. It, it's not easy to put these. I I'm, I give give you guys mad props of putting these races on the United States, right? Like we've been talking so long, like how long is this you know i have a 15 year old son just got his uh permit today right and 15 nice. and a half and i'm like i just hope that there's off-road racing when him and even my 10 year old are 
you know, ready oh, to go, there, right? Oh, uh, yeah, 100% there will be. It's, it's interesting, too, because, you know, I think our biggest threat is, is encroachment by, you know, uh, development, right? But it, it was interesting when we, you know, w- crossed over to the promoter side, if you remember, like the narrative was like, oh, they're going to shut the deserts down. Oh, yeah. Now you don't hear that. Yeah. And that's because of us, and that's because I have to give Dave Cole a lot of credit. Um, we've we've really shifted the paradigm to to where now, you know, we've got people calling us saying, "Hey, will you come here and put on a desert race?" And it's because of the economic impact that we have as an event, you know. And it's not club racing anymore; it's the large scale events, and they're seeing that. And like, you know, over the years working with Las Vegas, they're fantastic city to work with from a business standpoint and it's helped us become better businessmen better promoters right so now when we go to you know like now with parker and and with california 300 we're going to these cities and we're like hey here's here's what we do in vegas we'd like to do that here and they're like hell yeah yeah you know so i I, it's going to be around for a long time you know And it's not, I, I, just, I don't just say that about even about the states, right? Like even Mexico, yeah. I, I can see even Mexico. We used to be, we used to haul ass down the riverbed yeah. where it was flooded out and you'd have thousands, I really, tens yeah. of thousands on this lined up on the side. Well, I don't, don't get me wrong, it, it's still cool. We have this ceremonial, you know, start. But it's not the same. It ain't the same no. as going down and hitting the big jump and you don't know what you're going to run into. Is it going to be flooded? Yeah. Or is it going to be, I mean, there's, People. Well, p- plus that that made that made such a natural amphitheater, yes. right? Like, and, it, and the whole city stopped. Now, it, it's I think less people are spectating because yeah. of that. And you know, it's something that I really wish Score would bring back. And oh, you no, know, if it's that, a, if it's that, I mean, like I said, we we're, we're getting more and more speed zones. And don't get me wrong, there's plenty about there's plenty of racing going on, right? But yeah. I just see. It's just like, okay, now we're a little bit further out of oh. town. Now we're getting yeah. somewhere else. It's out. definitely changed. You know, it's funny because, like, what really reminded me of it is the other day when we were down there and I'm, I'm hanging out with Tim Herps and, you know, uh, <laughs> Mr. Fabulous. I call him Mr. Fabulous. Um, you know, shows up and, um, uh, you know, he's talking about the old days. And, of course, I'm, I'm talking about uh, Mark Post. Yeah. And uh, it, was, it was like, still to this day, I, it blows me away that he got arrested, but he still won the ball 1,000, <laughs> right? That's just inc- the most incredible story. Uh, if anybody has never seen that, go Google that. You know, Mark Post being arrested, you know, guns drawn during I, the race. I, I, was, I was just telling my son, we were pre-running, you know, he, he is, a, unfortunately, he had finals, right? But I squeezed him out on Thursday. And so I'm like, you know what? You, I want you to go. Because we went through some of the beach sections that we haven't been for, through for a while, Arendia. Yeah. Uh, not through the rock, rock whoops, but, you know, we, it's been a while since we've been down that town. But anyway, as we're coming into Santo Tomas, I'm like, hey, did you ever see that Riviera video where guns are blazing? And he's all, you know, like, you don't see that every day. I'm like, it's right here. This has happened right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That was pretty wild. For yeah, sure. that was. I, I'm really glad that I was around to see that era of like no speed limits on the highway. Oh, man. You know, the guys doing a hundred miles an hour, passing in and out of traffic, just bonkers. And you know, as a promoter, like I'm like, oh my god, the liability. But man, it was cool. It was. It's super rad. And you know, it's. I, I remember those days in in Ojos Negros, like I said, w- watching my dad. I remember went down in a in a station wagon. This is just totally crazy, right? They came down same way they come off of Ojos Negros, but they used to take a left, and so now they you know they're going towards like seventy seven K seventy seven on the highway. Right. And I remember that you know some of those long straightaways, I see these class one class ones coming, and they're 
I mean, they're racing. They're racing yeah. on the highway. Yeah. And we're right in the middle of them. You right. You know what I mean? And they're doing a hundred, hundred and change coming up to you know us. And I'm I'm back then the station the station wagons the back seat flipped the back way right. Yeah. So I'm sitting there going holy. Cow, You're in the race. Is, I'm in the race. This yeah. Is front. We're front and center. Yeah. But you know, obviously, we can't have that nowadays, right? I mean, we're just trying to eat. Obviously, safety first, and and try to get try try to do, I guess as much as we can to protect what we have. Sure. And, uh, you know, because, I, yeah, it's Mexico, and there, we get a lot of things, we get a lot of, we, uh, get a lot of, a lot away with some things down there, right? And everything that's, you know, it takes to put on these events and everything, but it's better that, you know, we have we have safety down there first, safety number one, because, you know, without, without safety and keeping everybody really, safe during these events yeah. how, how dangerous they are it's uh it's super important yeah no i totally agree you know so let's go let's go let's talk about this recent win i mean you've won this race before but like seems like right now you got a lot of momentum because now your points lead correct yeah, yeah yeah we're so we 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 got second in san felipe we actually won the race but uh we got a time penalty i knew exactly where it happened right and uh but we lost by 20 seconds and um you know obviously how you finish that race is how you start the baja 500 so we started second um you know we've been doing this for a long time and and we're a grassroots team and, and it's it's really hard right like to compete with some of the teams we're competing sure. with, you know and they're not only do they have money, but they're very talented yeah. in, 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 in what they take and what they bring, bring down there and, and bring to the table is a little bit more than, than what we're, you know, we don't have helicopters. We don't have unlimited chase trucks. You know, our guys are, you're not pre-running in race vehicles. We're, we're, we're not pre-running race vehicles. We're not down there for three weeks at a time. I would like to, I'm yeah. jealous. You yeah. know, that's a lot of tacos. That's a lot of, that's a lot of. That's a lot of a lot of fun times down there, right? But some of these guys, they're 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 spending from the day one of pre run and it, it, it being open, and they're not coming home until after the race, yeah. right? And I have a business to run. Well, <laughs> and I got I got fiberglass to make so people can get to the race. But sure, um, no, it's it's uh, it you know it's it's very rewarding. You know, I think that's probably one of the biggest things is if I could do it coming from what I came from. And, and and don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it, it's expensive, but we do it on a budget. And, yeah. And um, you know, we have I have saw a solid team of guys that are volunteers only, strictly volunteers. And we've been we've been doing this a lot. And it's just a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit better. You know, let's spend spend a little bit more money. And I think that before I wasn't spending the money. Mm -hmm. You know, I was I was trying to do it too cheap. I guess is is the best way to explain it. And now. I think we found the right balance. We don't replace everything every time. It's probably better, of course, but even I, I'm like, well, that thing's tested from the last race. Why would I go and replace a certain item? Now, are you doing all your own prep as well? Well, we are in a house. I have a just a I, I built a 4,000 square foot uh, detached garage at my house, and and I have guys come in. Yeah, there's full time guys. They're actually from Tecate, Mexico. Uh, a guy named Nico. Um, they actually used to work for uh, Juan Carlos, but no, I'm very, very much involved. Uh, checklist, you know, I go over there af after work every day. It's right, you know, obviously it's right where I live, so it's like it's really, really easy. And then I'll just be like, hey, don't, don't forget this, don't forget sure. that, you know. So, and no, and who built your chassis? Uh, right now we're on a Tisk, uh, Tisco. Okay, and, and that was the biggest thing last year for us to to learn. You know, I've I've well, I've always been a Geyser Brothers fan. They build, I mean, obviously this, this guy's been building race cars for. A long long time the the truck that i had before this tisco was a geyser and i mean you could just go hit anything that that, right. that, that th you're going to finish the race you can go just you know hit anything as hard as you can it's a little bit heavier it's not as maybe not as quick and agile as my is my tisco truck right and i, I learned that the hard way just the, with the first race last year with the tisco truck in san felipe we you don't realize i i i, I tell people this example of like with a new car let's just say it's like a corvette and you put a you you cover the dash and you say hey go go 65 miles an hour if you rip that you know uncover the dash and this tip no you're doing 85 and it doesn't feel like you're doing 85 right that that's kind of the difference between the geyser and the tisco the geyser trucks a little bit a little bit heavier 
the disc goes you know is just more of a it's on a balance it's a it's a it's a trophy truck spent perfect pur- purpose built my last truck was a was a trophy truck right converted so you know we gave up a little bit on 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 the the how how much it weighed but it was a uh, it was it was a truck you're going to finish every time and, and right. we, we took a spill in the in the tisco the first time out and it was because we were going too fast you don't yeah. realize you're going fast it's it worked really really it good. works yeah and john vance builds some amazing he, cars he, he really does and if you look at it i mean you just you're like man he 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 did away without a cooler because it's 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 just a it's engineered right he goes yeah. light on bolts here where he can get away with it on or you know you, places where he can cut corners but have it stay together it, he's very 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 sharp that guy is yeah he he has a ton of experience he's you know one of the builders i i really respect and and then they're good at you know for guys out there who want to buy a truck they're good at chase support oh, too yeah. no yeah he, they, they offer the full package over there and yeah. uh you know from chasing to prepping to building and uh even give you pre-runners if you pay enough you know but no he's uh so you know I'm very very fortunate and that's that's a that's the touchy part right like the one thing i don't like about my business is we sell to all of these guys right so i mean we're selling to the herps we're selling to brenthal we're selling to geyser we're selling to tisco i mean and we build them we build all their panels right and and i i hear a little i i kind of get crap you know, when I, I had a geyser and I w- moved to Tisco and trying to, re- re- you know, that final line, of, why don't you buy my truck? Come got my yeah. truck. So I, I, I might have to get like a two year day. You know what? It's time to sell this one. Now it's, now it's Brenthal's turn. All right. Now it's, now it's Racer's turn. Now it's Herb's you're, turn. You're going to have to kiss all the girls. <laughs> Man, you know, it's, 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 it's tough, right? Because. Well, I think too, like there was a, you know, a geyser ruled. You know, they put out so many trucks and they were so reliable that they were just, you know, un, not untouchable, but just the volume of vehicles they built. Um, and, you know, they were winning. But as technology got better and people understood more, other people started refining. And, and it's this like thing that happens in everything this osmosis where it's like yeah you're learning from what the geyser brothers did exactly you know so you're not starting from zero you know you you can see what a geyser brothers chassis is so you know when you know i'm sure everybody you know now mason is very popular because of their four-wheel drive vehicles and also their their success that they had in 6100 too but they didn't start from zero. No, they you didn't. Know I mean? No, there's a lot of tweaking, <clears throat> and I mean, I think I think that the overall the overall look and whatever the functionality. How about that? Right. Sure. I'm, I'm, I, 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 it's exciting to see what this new Mason uh, live axle in the back is going to be. Sure. You know, because you know they're really thinking out of the box, right? I I'm shocked how many, but you got to have it, right? You can see it. If you don't have a Mason and you're on all wheel drive running trophy truck right now it's going to be really hard to win and that's exactly what geysers did back in the day i mean everybody had geysers truck if you don't have a geyser truck you ain't gonna win so it's really pushing it really is exciting to see like everybody's pushing so hard to be you know what what are we going to do next yeah we're going to do it's we got there's got to be ways to improve it and obviously mason they're not going to be they're not just stagnant of what they have although right right now it's working well guess what they're going to go well it's working but there's also like like maybe ways to improve it yeah there's reliability issues there's you know and then then there's the old parts thing where like at this race i think three of the cars all had the same um uh uh, third member yeah plunge axle or something something. break right and and i think it i think the consensus was it was a bad batch of steel or something right right? so you're going to have those anomalies you know but it's it's very interesting from promoter side it's it's exciting interesting and it's a pain in the ass because it's like okay now you have to spend this much to be competitive so at what point do we break away and have a two-wheel drive class and a, and a four-wheel drive class and then at what point you know should we cap the spending and go okay you know what i mean like let's keep it it's not formula one you know what i mean like let's keep it uh, approachable it, it's all remains to be the, seen the answer is trophy truck spec you just 
ban these, you know, banned all all-wheel drives, banned all, it's trophy truck spec, everybody runs trophy truck spec, and that's it. Sure. But that's not going to happen. No, cat's out of those, the bag. Those all-wheel drives are way too cool. <clears throat> Have you driven one? <laughs> you know what? I, uh, um, last year, Baja 1000, we were having a crappy year last year. Uh, rolled it at, at San Felipe, had, blew a motor at the 500. So I'm, right then I'm like, you know what? Hey, we're just we're just going to go race, right? We're going to go, we're going to race. Um, you know, I think that that's, that's really what, you know, these guys, and we're making plans for the Baja 1000 right now, right? Like we're, 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 we're seeing who's out there, who's available. There's not a lot of talented drivers out there. Like, Guys that pool. we can go, you, they, you can go win. So they get snapped. I mean, they get snatched up sure. really, really quick. But last last year's Baja 1000, uh, we were invited to go um, to the 1000 with Tavo Vidosola. Mm-hmm. And I was really, really honored to even get the call from Steve and talk to talk to Tavo. We actually were going to go uh, have a test date right after the Baja uh, 400. Went to their went to their pit meeting you know it was announced yeah n- not publicly but it was announced in front of their team got to see how they do things man what a t- top-notch <laughs> group there and, and talk about a team that takes it serious and, oh yeah i mean it's it was it was like i said i i was grew i grew up you know watching gus back in the day yep and uh it, i was just really in really pro excited trucks. in pro trucks yeah. yeah really really excited to do the baja 1000 with them and uh, it was it, it was unfortunate, and I, and I totally respect their decision. And 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 you know, after the Baja 400, um, Alan and Pudia had gotten, I think it was second or third. And this Baja 400 that the the Vodosles just ran in, with uh, Gustavo, he um, he ran to some some mechanical failures, so yeah. he got like 12th or 13th. So he had a bad position. So long story short, you know, uh, the, you know, obviously those guys are really really they're they're those two families are very very close yeah um and and they decided to race race with each other so you know and Pudi has offered their their spot for to Tavo and nice. uh and basically you know they they raced together so no I, like i said i i was uh, i was i was excited that was like the best like i'm gonna go race i will drive <laughs> uh okay no, yeah. I got, so i was able to 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 race with you know everything happens for a reason you know the scott at coastal uh, he invited yeah, me. Scott it's a, it's, a, it's yeah. a, those those guys talk about like if there's somebody that I really respect in this sport. You know, when I rolled in San Felipe, here he is, you know, fierce competitor, and uh, you know they 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 land their chopper right there. I'm almost getting emotional about it. Like they literally land their chopper, check up on me, and flew me out of there. And, uh, and you know, when they invited me to, to race the Baja 1000, I'm like, dude, absolutely. I want to race with you guys. So, yeah. and we actually ended up winning, winning yeah. uh, last That's year. Right. So no, we're, we're definitely on a, man, we're on a really good streak. Um, it's, it's really, really exciting for our team. You know, it's, it's a lot of, there's a lot to learn in this off-road Baja, especially, um, there's a balance in my opinion, you know, how you have to drive. Sure. Um, in my in my in in my case, you know how you have to prep the car and not be too cheap uh, when you're doing it. Like on a budget, I'm not going to spend every last dollar racing. You know, there's, you know, I have a business, I have a family. There's there's you know some things I I want to do to set my cut my kids up so they don't they don't you know have it as hard as I have. You know, what I mean, we want be- better things for our kids and things like that. So as long as I can do it and still put some money away and run my business and it's not affecting that. Uh, that's kind of like you know really what what my my goal is but when you're racing it man it's just it's it's really hard because it does cost money and there's a there's there's a certain amount you got to put into it and but we've definitely found that balance and uh have have had the the band our team together uh for a certain amount of time key guys that are that i've met throughout the years that are just for me all the difference in the world and and uh and you know these these guys that are coming up in our class, they're they're young, they're fierce, they're they're fearless, and they got all the money, and their parents want to want them to do it, and you know the Pervortis and the Herbst, and I'm like, man, I'm forty. I'm, some of them I'm double their age, you know, I'm forty five, and I'm like, 
all right, well, so I have a plan B. My son's 15 and a half. And I'm like, okay, well, yeah, keep on playing all those, you know, all those video games and and keep on, you know, uh, you start coming to the races with me and we got to start showing you some stuff. And because, you know, I don't I don't know. I, I'm, I'm kind of kidding here, right? I, I don't know how long I'm going to be, you know, uh, competitive i guess is the word sure um i feel that right now we're really at the top of the game and you know i see the not not that i'm comparing myself by any means but like the rob mccachrins and in the in the larry rosslers and how old they're doing and they're still they're still doing it very competitively i just I in just bad equipment in bad equipment like exactly. that's, a, that's it's, it's a very very impressive yeah and one of the one of the things i think that i'm most <clears throat> excited for is is to be able to do it with my son yeah you know, and 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 really do it together, and and hopefully competitive, yeah. competitive wise. You know, because obviously we're doing this to to really to do good, right? Um, I wouldn't. I, I'm the type of guy. I'm a very competitive guy. If I if I knew I couldn't win, I'm not. I'm I'm not. Gonna, I wouldn't be in the sport. Yeah. You know what I mean, I'm. I, I would go take up something else. Racing against your dad is something that 90 percent of the racers in the world will never get. I've accomplished everything I wanted to do, and now he's just like taking the reins. I want to be remembered for being a, a, a huge part of short course, not just racing, keeping it alive, helping it grow. If it comes down to the last weekend and I'm in it, the boys better watch out. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's for me personally. Like when I see guys like you, like I really love it because you're, you know, you're a part of our culture on the business side and on the race side. It's like it's kind of like you know walking it like you talk it, right? And then too, like I think it gives you something as a business person where you know the drivers are like, "Hey, man, you know, blah blah," and you're like, "Actually, no, it is this way," and I right. know it because yep. I, I raced. And by the way, I beat you. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's cool, man. It's it's uh, you know I appreciate. I, I mean, I know it's hard. It takes away from your it business. Is. Takes away from your family. You know, it, people don't realize how difficult it is to win off road races and how much you have to put into it. You don't just like show up and. You know, again, talk a, b- a little bit about, you know, y- y- you came up the ladder system. You didn't just show up and there's a 6100 ready for you to race. It's like you raced seven. What'd you, did you race stuff in between that and 6100? It was, a you know, luckily for me, you know, I've never been a d- buggy dork like they call them, right? right. I, I got into a class seven. My first race was a FUD race. I was very fortunate to start way back then, and we won the first race. Maybe that it was like, I mean, that would just, that just hooked me from then. Sure. We, uh, we did a lot of class seven races. One of the, you know, one of the things when, you know, when, when you do this so long, and, and I'm not the only one, I've, I've heard it from other off-road racers, right? Um you 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 get burned out right mm-hmm. when you're not an arrive and drive like like myself and when just like you said it you know you're going down there i, I just i cut it at one week it, like that's that's all i'm going to go do in a prayer and i got i got four kids i'm a grandpa by the way i mean it's like you know it, it's 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 hard to be out of town you know and, and keep sure. the wife happy and have a balanced life because even at a week a race times four races and we do a couple other you know little odds and ends in between that's a month you're out of you're out of town for a month and that's just for pre-running and the race day right so it's a i mean you know going back to where i was going with all this is it's hard not to quit along the way not for good we'll just say take a break not quit how about take a break, right? Like, and I've been there before, and I was feeling like that before this race. I'm like, you know what? You know, after you've done it for so long, you're like, you know, what? I, it would be nice. How about just a year off? We're yeah. not, we're not going to sell anything. We're not selling the race car. Anything. We're just going to just do some family vacations, and we're going to do some stuff that's just like yeah. real easy. I can just pack my bags, exactly. and put my flip flops in there, and go, just go f- fly to wherever Cabo or Hawaii or yeah. some kind of family trip. Sounds way less stressful, way easy. There's no planning. I mean, okay, there's planning, but the, let let the wife do that at that point. You know what I mean? And but this is really, um, you know, my son coming up is a little bit more of a mot- motivation for me to be like, okay, it's something new. You know, I want to show sure. him the ropes and everything. And then um, and the fact we're doing so well. Yeah, you know I mean, it's just like it's this 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 Baja 500 really. If there's anything, I was. 
I was feel, starting to feel that, you know, and, and I felt that it's, it's, it's normal. I've, I've felt that three or four times in the past. Sure. You know, where I, uh, you know, come you asked me a little bit ago, like how do, you know, how, different cars and, di- you know, what, how do, what have I raced? And, and, and one of those things is, you know, the avenues of, of racing I've had was with Pistol Pete. Right? Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. you know, this is a customer, God bless his soul. You know, he's, he's a good, good friend of mine. One of my best friends at the time. A uh, guy that, uh, whether because we were friends or whatever, didn't, didn't, he wanted to always do it. He's a horse trader, right? So, sure. You know, he, uh, instead of paying his bill sometimes, guess what? I would have, hey, what are you racing next? Or, hey, come race for this and we'll squash that bill or that balance or whatever. And so I was happy to do it because, yeah. you know, it was a good way for him to, to wipe, wipe the books off of what he owed me and, and still just arrive and drive. I still remember you know, going to Vegas Torino and just showing up my first time with a helmet bag, and I started the race. I'm like, man, this, this is what this is what <laughs> right. it feels like. This, this is, is pretty, pretty nice. nice. Yeah. This is, I don't have to do anything, right? And uh, so, the, you know, the couple of times that I put a break and pause on my own and my own um, my own gig was with him. Uh, one of the funnest times we had was racing. It was Cameron Steele. My site, myself and Pete. It was back at a four, a Parker four twenty five. And was that the the three seat car? That was the three seat car. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Pete started. I don't know how. You know, he's. I think he was probably at, looking to get some extra dough for the race. I don't know how and why Cameron sponsored him. I think a couple thousand bucks just to ride. Sure. And I was like, are, you, are you, really? You're gonna Cameron's gonna ride with me? I'm, yeah. I, I've never driven a trophy truck before. Well, Pete started i got in the in the driver's seat after that with cameron co-driving and uh and we ended up getting that's when pete's uh he actually qualified first with the paddles oh yeah in the, yeah in, this, in the in the in the soft sand. yes there's, I remember I mean, there's that. videos and yeah. stuff like that he qualified first so all all our, all the more reason like we went into the race and i'm like he qualified first i'm going to be driving this truck and about the only lesson he gave me i'm like this is is it how is it first of all how's it how is it to drive in the, from the middle, you know? And yeah. so we, we take it down to the, the blue water parking lot and he's like, just go drive around here. And, you know, just doing some basically, you know, parking lot driving. I'm okay. I, you're ready. You're good. Okay. So no, it was, it, that was some of those, some of the times that I've raced with him have been some of the, the coolest, coolest times in off-road racing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, obviously it's, the, the more more and more the time goes on it's like what you, you race with pistol pete yeah and and you know um it's some you know just things i'll, I'll remember for the rest of my life no it, it's, he was a unique person i actually never got to race in that vehicle but i i he i got an offer to ride and i'm like i'm a terrible ride i'm a terrible co-dog i'm like i'm a driver right so i i never did and then I was supposed to drive it at one point and this is back in RDC days. And it was, it's actually a funny story. Like we got into it on the forum and uh, he, finally he calls me. He's like, really? Like you're lighting me up on the forum. And I'm like, yeah, Hey, you're yeah. lighting me up. Right. <laughs> That's one thing he always, he always just, he would call you out or if he wasn't, oh, yeah. you know what, if he didn't believe or whatever, agree with you or yeah, thought tell you. Or whatever. And, and it's not what he, the way he thought or whatever, yeah. he would, he would, there was no yeah. side show. It's right to your face. He would tell you exactly how he felt. Well, and he goes, uh, well, I don't think I want you driving with me. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, Pete, whatever. Right. And then like a week later we were friends again or whatever. Yeah. Right. And arguing about something else. So. No, he was he was a great dude. You know the cool thing about that three seater was, and like I said, that was well, that, he brought a lot of people. He brought a lot of people, you know, into the sport exactly. through that. It's funny because exactly. like I still run into people. I'm like, oh, how'd you get into this? Well, I ran into this guy, Pistol Pete. Yep. He charged me five grand to yep. sit in the driver exactly. in the co dogs. There are two of the co dog yeah. seats, right? We called it the dummy seat. So yeah, he you know he would put these people over there. You have one job. You watch these gauges. You know what I mean? And when you see a light, you tell me. And then you'd have this, you know, obviously the guy that really, you know, drove drove with them and, and co-drove and, and the GPS guy that changed that changes tires right. that he had to have. You're not going to just go throw a $5,000 guy in there or whatever. But that was the cool thing about the three-seater is people got to experience it. Yeah. They have some money and it's five, ten thousand 10000 bucks. It helped t- Pete with his, uh, 
with this program yeah and got him to the starting line and yeah. and and basically still he was still very very competitive yeah even even with three people back in those days you know well and like on a shoestring i mean that that's the thing though too that i loved about him is that you know he was competing with all these big money teams and then a lot of times he was beating them you know right. and that was that that i guess that's where i was going with all this is he was he was very you know inspiring to me right sure because I mean, just like I do now, obviously in trophy truck spec, you know, he was doing it then, you know, I mean, you know, it's like, it's like a father, right. Or, or your parents, you take the good and you, you know, you see what they do. You take the good. And and if you've experienced things, you're like, you know what, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Well, I kind of, I kind of consider Pete like a father figure to me. And I've seen, I've seen a lot of a lot of ways that he cut corners that bit him in the ass. I mean, sure. he, he was he was winning a lot of races. I'm sorry, leading a lot of races, and then just because of this, it didn't last the whole way, and they you know he'd break down. Sure, so close to the finish, which is just like heartbreaking. You know, what I mean, and and uh, and so that's 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 what exactly what I'm talking about is just you spending a little bit more, in in in. And it, 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 there is a balance as far as the prep and, and doing this at, in a competitive level. Yeah. I ju- your equipment. I just had a friend who bought Robbie Pierce's trophy truck and he raced the 500. Very first race. Hard. No time in the truck. You know, him and uh, Ryan and my other friend, BC, both same thing. And it was like, hey, you, like you guys are just going for a drive. Just chill right. out. Right. You know, get get the truck to the finish. He, they had one problem. Uh, they hit a they hit something and and broke the uh, steering um, box, and then got that fixed and got going again. But you know that that was the thing is I was like I was like explaining to him you know hey you got to pay for the prep and for everything right. to be done right because otherwise you're going to be standing in the desert right and no. you've yes. already spent the money to get there don't. Right. You don't cheap out on the last, you know, five thousand dollars or whatever the number is, right? Go there with the intent that you're gonna finish every mile, and then the racing part of it that that'll all come, right? But you can't get any experience if you don't have any experience, right? You, just like you, just like you said, it's it's you got to There's man, you're already spending the money. You know, that's that took me years to to figure that part well, out. You're already spending the it, money. I, I'm look. I'm with you on the sense though, like it's hard when, you know, like gambling, I can't gamble. I I can bet on MMA fights and that's about it. Right. But like, I can't go to Vegas and put money on the table because that's money I had to make. Right. Right. So I'm like, "Uh," you know, so I I get that mentality, but in off-road racing, man, you you gotta, you gotta get the best prep. You gotta, you you gotta go prepared or you're gonna, you're not gonna have a good time. You're not, I mean, you're going to do good while you can and then it's going to help. Yeah, I mean, sooner or later, just come apart. Well, I also think that the level of competition now is so high. Like, you know, going back to what we were talking about the Geyser Brothers is like they had that era where like they were winning everything, you okay. know, and um, then other builders caught up and in some regards, like, you know, uh, pass them. Um, and so now you, you have a scenario where the, the knowledge and the technology used to be held by a f- couple groups of people. And now it's not that way. Now you can, you know, you can get a championship trophy truck, you know, with a phone call if you have enough money, okay. you know, and like the Herps program, like, you know, th- these guys show up and it's like everything's already figured out, guys. You just have to not crash and you're going to do well, you know. And like just like you said earlier, I mean, they're pre-running in their same identical truck that they're going to race on yeah. race day. And what a huge, huge advantage. Massive. I, 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 I did that with uh, the Coastal guys, you know. What yeah. I mean? and, and don't get me wrong. I would do that myself if I had the funds to do that. Sure. Right. But that's a whole nother $500,000 truck that they're going out there. And they're doing three and four laps when Scott told me, hey, so what do you think about on Wednesday just doing a whole race scenario? Like we're going to start and it's not about the time the race is going to start and we're going to just take, we're going to run this truck around the whole track. You know what I mean? Like, of course, we'd already done our pre-running and, and it, you know, obviously. For, yeah, it's a great for, idea. For somebody, for somebody that doesn't have a helicopter, you know, people would be like, oh, well, that's pretty, you know, kind of dangerous. Well, he, he's flying the helicopter too. So it's not like putting others, you know, people sure. coming backwards or whatever. He can easily radium or whatever. But I mean, talk about a whole, a, 
basically the whole race unfolding before you even do the race. I mean, that's what that's the level that the, 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 these guys are yeah. doing and spending and planning uh, and what it really what it takes to win nowadays. It's not it's definitely not easy. And it's only only getting harder and harder and it's it's just crazy it's, the level everybody's taking this you team. know it's it's funny and i totally agree with you but then like in utv racing like you look at a guy like sims shows up no pre-run finishes second he like, damn near wins yeah. the race and like literally if not the one of the most competitive classes oh, in, yeah. in off-road racing you know so you know i think there's a lot i mean obviously pre-running is a, a huge advantage and you know, I was actually down at the 500. I was uh, um, hanging out with Adam Householder and his dad, and they were giving me the like, okay, we don't need this many days of pre-running because it's too expensive. What's yeah. your opinion on that? <clears throat> you know what? It's uh, it's it's kind of touchy, right? Because I I definitely think you need pre-running. You know, I, in, in Baja because. Uh, I, I I really thrive. I really like going and looking for the lines. That it it's 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 it it's really challenging. And you just like man, I think we need to pre run this section. There's got to be some other lines out there. And and really, it's only it's only getting rougher and rougher. Um, the the courses are so that that part of it. It's like yeah, we need to do something because. It is really getting beat up, and by the time the last day of pre-running comes along, it's chewed up. Holy cow! I mean, the the course is, you know, you're, we're we're changing the GPS. It's like, no, that that wasn't there, or this, you know, oh, the, that, that danger was that. The, the, we got to watch out for this. That soft um, hill uh, over at yeah. Europan that caused. Um, it's totally different. To... There's like three or four lines right there, yeah. and 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 we we took that same line the day. You know what? I would have never ran Europan. Like Europan's the same. It's like you know that's one of those. I, I'm not going to go spend my time there. Guess what? Because of that hill alone, I'm like, we better go look at that because right. there was so many different tr like trails there, trying to go through that, and it was at, by the time the I think it was like two days before it was ready to race. You know that that was like a ravine from all the from all the water had rent, had rushed down there. You yeah, know, big old big old three foot ditches that Tavo and you know all these guys raced. It was a it was a sandy hill by the time it was race day. Yeah, it was you know like I mean? it was all filled in. It was all just burned through and yeah. It, it, the the one section that Kevin Adler rolled in, like yeah. what people don't understand. Okay, it's uphill, it's off right. camber, and it's silt. Right. You know, it's like. Okay, first off, soul beds are notoriously difficult for big vehicles to get through, right? And then it's you know you're you're off camber, you're on the side of a hill, going uphill. It's like how can you make it any well, I, worse? I, I guarantee you that line that was which I'm like, why would you guys do it? Whoever thought about that being a second line for a truck, you could do it, but it was it was definitely sketchy. You saw what happened to Kevin, but I guarantee it was a, a UTV in full wheel drive. You that know, cut they, it. They yeah. just cut it, and it's like then the next guy, sure, and, and it, the, you know, that took it through there was probably something a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger, and all of a sudden now you know it was it was it was uh, it was tricky because you got about halfway up uh, up it 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 kind of went to a right, but it was off camber. But if you weren't committed, yeah. then you exactly what happened, what Kevin did, and and you're you know going down. To the uh, to the lower line where that's where all the the, the wash I mean the washouts and stuff were but going to your going to your back to your question with the pre running you know if you know if you had if you had an organized pre run where it's kind of like best in the desert and hey we're all going to go through here and pre run together and it, it won't work in Baja that 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 would I think that that would kill it in my opinion what I think that that needs to happen is just limited limited times i don't know if there's a way that we can kind of see like hey you get to go down to three here twice three times and that might even be too much I, I i don't know um maybe just where it's like hey the pre-running's one week before the race and however many laps you get in is how many laps you get in i really the, the next the next question would be like do we keep keep cars that are got 40 inch tires pre-runners which i don't i don't want that to happen either because i have one but you know that that would be maybe a 
uh, somebody's argument, right? Where it's like, sure. hey, what, 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 do you want to just go, you know, all of us pre-running razors, you know, or UTVs? It's a tricky thing because it's, it's not just the it's not just the deterioration of the course that you have to consider or the locals or all that type of stuff. But then, you know, no pre-runners, no pre-run right. industry, no pre-run vehicles. Right. right? And right. so that, that financially hurts our culture. Right. So it's, it's a tricky one. Cause like, you know, we are super excited to bring pre-running back to the States and we did it with the UTV world championship. And right. one of the funny things that we learned is like, if we had a big distinction between if you raced Baja and then the guys who only raced the States, they didn't know how to pre-run. They just right. ran the course. Right. Right. So like we're looking at, you know, literally the data after the fact and all the guys who were top five were all Ba racers. Right. And everybody who raced in the States was, you know, in the, you know, behind them. And so we're looking at the tracking data and we're like, well, why didn't any of these guys take this line? That's obviously a faster line. And it's because, they just didn't have the experience of pre-running. So, right. uh, you know, we did limited pre-running and, and that course got, it got chewed up, you know, any place where there's a soft course, but it was, you know, it was, it was still passable, you know I mean? It was still like, all right, but um, yeah, it's just, I'm, I'm always curious as to, you know, what racers opinions are, you know, different, you know, for different I, reasons. I, I All right, Chase, number 23, it's 2023. This championship's yours. Let's show these guys what's up. Easy, boys. It's not over yet. Big dog still got to eat. <laughs> Whatever you say, big dog. Seriously? These fools think I'm fried? They know the deal. I think that, I think that the answer would be a limiting the pre-running yeah it's probably the most that's probably the most you know the the best the best thing i can think of i mean um just because you know, you know those other ideas i just put out you it's just not i don't think they're i don't really don't think that you could do that you right know, limp, you know, you've been around here twice or you've been at you know or in razors i i personally like to to hit the track i so the way i do it is i i pre-run in the utv Mm -hmm. you know, I go and do, you know, it's super easy. Um, you know, you can, you got four wheel drive, so you can go check out all the sil hills or you can go do whatever yeah. you need to. You don't have to worry about getting stuck. But once you, once you're closer to race day and you've done it a couple of times, then you know, you know what, you already have all your notes in there. Now let's go run it in a truck that's going to handle closer to what your truck is on race day. So I do one, one basically just and not race mode you're just in a bigger truck sure it's 90 inches wide 40 inch tires in the pre-runner you go do it one time and then you're even fine-tuning those notes because whatever you kicked in in a razor or oh yeah you know with 35 inch tires instead of 40 inch tires or you're you're going slower that's where you'll just do your fine-tune adjustments and sure. then you know because you're not going to run the razor as you know as, as hard as you know in a, in a pre-runner right so it's uh you know that that I, I me personally i go because it, it is expensive to run the pre-runners right it's got everything a trophy truck has sure you, right so i don't want to go wear the heck out of it you know i know these other guys fit they're full prep and that's a whole nother race car and those yeah. are even harder to work on right yeah, they AC are. and all that stuff me the way i do it it's like i'll, I'll go pre-run all year and then go prep it at the end of the year the the, the those those trucks i i personally have a Jimmy Weitzel truck and they're just so freaking bulletproof and they're so rad and cool. And in, in the, in the, the people that are down there in Baja, I know that they would, they don't want to have pre-run go away. Cause I mean that honestly, it's kind of cool to see the fans. No, right? it, they're, 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 they're honestly out there. They probably take the whole week off before, you know, whether that work or school or I mean, they're out there, they, yeah. they want to get their stickers. They like to see, these trucks wrapped like our race trucks come through there and sure. you know they, no, it, it just pumps up pumps everything up it's good for the economy in baja it's good for the economy wherever we go and we pre-run because it's putting more dollars on you know and the other thing is it's a great marketing tool because really if you don't know that the race is coming when pre-running starts you're like oh okay yes, this is what's going on like There's... i get text messages from people that work in tj and then in Sada, they're like oh the race is this weekend i'm like yep you know or it's coming in a couple of weeks so 
Um, I, I love that part of the culture and same as you, like some of the, my best memories of, of off-road racing are pre-running, you know, being able to have that time, you know, where you're, you're not racing. So you're not racing by stuff. And then we even took it a step further. We did a father and son trip a few years ago um, with uh, Bryce and Steve and then um, uh, Larry and Chad uh, Raglan and then, uh, you know, a couple um, uh, Randy Anderson and RJ Anderson. And that was really the first time that I stopped and just kind of smelled the flowers, you know, took it all in. And it was it was amazing to be hanging out with, you know, Larry Raglan in particular. And, and I go, hey, Larry, what's down this road? And he goes, Matt, I don't know. Let's let's drive down there. And we saw so much cool stuff. Now we do it. Now it's a thing. And we're like, oh, we're just going to go take the razors down. We did We did a few years of doing the Legends Rally tours. And that kind of got put on pause dur- during COVID. And, you know, we've been talking lately about doing that again. You know, Cameron does a lot of that. It's really right. cool, you know, where you get to go see the missions and the wineries and all the stuff we're it just flying super, by. Super cool. Like, have you been to the Cheese Cave in Ojos Negros? Yes, I have. Yeah. Oh, dude. It's, it's so, it's, for people who don't know, it's a 110-year-old cheese yeah. cave that makes literally the best cheese in all of Mexico, and they have, li- like, a five-star restaurant there. Yeah. Best steak you're ever going to have in your life. Oysters. There's so, many, there's so many places like that in Baja. Yeah. Which, honestly, I want to get with Cameron Still and maybe get into his phone or GPS files. Go like, dude, man, he he probably knows them all, right? Yeah, all he does. Missions and all those cool spots, you know that that you know a lot of people don't get to experience. But I can tell you, I can tell you this: that when I go down there, you know, it's it's a it really is really cool to be, you know, yeah. in, in in all of. You know, on the beach in the in the in the desert, you know, running through these people's towns, you know, they they, you it's know, Baja, magical. It's magical. It really is. I mean, and, and they're into it. It seems to me more, like more than we are. You know, I mean, like they. This is it's a well, huge deal. It, it's funny because like a friend of mine that's from Mexicali explained to me. He goes, no, he goes, we it's surveyed, right? Like off road racing is bigger than soccer in Baja. Oh yeah. You know, and so that's part of our culture. It's an important thing to understand. But listen, you know, I was born in Michigan. And I'm like five years older than you. And what the neighborhood I grew up in was rugged, right? And being white wasn't popular. So I, and then I moved to El Cajon in the 80s. And it was like, you know, literally fantasy land. Here's a here, kid. Here's a three wheeler. You know, we're going to go skate Del Mar. We're going to the beach. We're going to Glamis. We're going to the Baja 1000. Every weekend was like a new adventure. And I was like, you know, and, oh, Mickey Thompson, what's that? Uh, right. You know, and I feel so lucky to have grown up in the era and this location. And, and then Baja, like having Baja as your backyard, people don't get it. Like the relationship that we have with Baja, it's like, you know, it's almost like we don't want to tell anybody, right? right. Because the more people we tell, the faster it's going to change. And, uh, um, you know, fortunately, it's so rugged that the evolution of it is slow. So I think we have a lot of time left, but, you know, it's not infinite. Um, but yeah, I mean, I started going down to Baja when I was 12, you know, and, and I've been all over that peninsula and there's still stuff that I'm like, I, you know, I was just talking about it the other day with these guys. I'm like the coast that's just South of Loretto, uh, Agua Verde. I mm-hmm. want to go fishing there. Like it's, oh. it's like all islands. It's super pain in the ass to get to. And I've, I've fished from shore there and uh, spearfish from shore there, but you know, you do it on a boat. It's going to be, Magnificent. What, one thing is, and it's funny because I tell everybody, um, just like you said, really, really the magic. I mean, the, don't get me wrong; it's all magical, right? But when you get when you get south, we'll call it uh, Bay, El, right around that Bay of LA area, and yeah. further south, and you start going through those towns and those and the views and in like the places you're talking about, and getting down into Loretto, and 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 it is really there's some cool. You know, I almost wish we did the peninsula run every year because it's a uh, it is super magic magical. I remember going down the you know two what was it I think it was four years ago before, before the the last peninsula run that they 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 ran. We went down there 
and you know we'd been pre-running for a couple of days and you know it's just like you know what this is a beautiful day you know guys we're gonna take off we're gonna go scuba diving you know so we went there you know Loretto right there and I didn't realize off of the off the coast right there they had like a like a beach that they went and set up and it was white sand and it was I don't know it was peanuts to go out there and we scoot I thought I was in like a trop like the yeah. color of the fish and the it was just um like insane and yeah on the way out there you know you want to see the dolphins we ended up r- running into uh, killer killer wells and I, it, I like none of us will ever forget that right? yeah it's just it's it's super super rad and undescribable what really what all of all of what Baja has and in 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 just it's just it's just crazy it's cool yeah it's it's funny because like I love traveling and uh, I keep going to different countries and you know almost like a search for like something that's better right like and I'm not it's not really a contest I'm I'm just I love traveling and love exploring but I keep going to places and people are like oh you know if you like Baja you should go here right and I've yet to find some place that's you know as you know as good as Baja and and, and it's the different thing that people need to understand it's it's still wild right and so like when you talk about European countries it's like okay they've had people there for thousands of years like it's tamed like it's still beautiful but it's different right. like Baja is still wild and there's still sections of it that are extremely difficult to access either by boat or off-road vehicles you know well it's funny because I mean before the Starlink came came around right you're going through these towns and it's like these towns they don't they don't have what we we have i mean there's no, no phones there's yeah. no internet they're they're literally have nothing yeah and to see the people down there and and how happy they are with nothing you know you really come down i know um right there in san ignacio that mission there yeah uh we won the championship two years ago and on the way back i'm like you know what let's pull the truck in there and like i said to see all those kids run out you know during their study time or whatever and them go through they were they showed us their classrooms they showed us their the whole mission we're what we're walking through there you know and now they're holding our, our hands and we're going through those and then before we left i'm like you know what ice cream it's peanuts down there. like i said it's not that expensive right. it's like everybody gets ice cream there's an ice cream there as you know yeah right there at the park and so we bought all the kids ice cream it really it, it it's it's something that just like you said you can't you can't describe and so honestly when we go down and and do the whole code like the whole peninsula run you know we'll go down there like more like closer to two weeks because it's just a uh, first 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 thing it's, it takes longer to do the whole thing but number two is is you know to really be able to stop and take some time because when we're doing it up here it's like it seems like we're always just like go 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 but really when you go down the peninsula run slows down it, you know it, it the, everything's just yeah. super the the, it, the it, everything slows down like I, times I, 10. I agree. I, I'm excited for this year, you know, doing this the first time that um, the peninsula is being run backwards, right? And actually doing racing down there during the day. Yeah. Starting it down the day. I think, I think that was a great, great idea. I think it's going to be super cool. Yeah. I, I'm excited about, I know the lo- it's going to make it tough logistically for all the teams. Yeah. Cause like now you have to drive two days to start the race and all those guys that only end up making it 30, 40, 50 miles. That's yeah. a long drive home. Yeah. You know, talk- <laughs> but at least, you know, maybe don't drive home. Maybe you're yeah, like, Hey, you we broke down Loretto. We're going to be yeah. here for a few days. It's like the, <laughs> yeah, sure. the old timers, right? Like I, I remember, uh, one of the guys who chased for McMillan was part of their team was this one of the OG legends, Ron Stacy. Mm-hmm. And he would tell me about like getting to a town and running out of gas and the town didn't have gas. So they just hang out in the town for a few days until somebody brought gas and nobody knew when they were going to get was gas. It was like, yeah. could be three days, might be a right. week, you know, we're, we're here. Meanwhile, he's like, there's, he's like, they had beer. We're good. Yeah. You know, like yeah. don't stress out. So, no, it is. I like, you know, that, you know, being a businessman and having a busy schedule, it, it like forces you to unwind, you know, to, to kind of let go. OK, shit, I can't get a hold of that guy right now because I'm out of service and nobody can call me. And, you know, it's a it's a reprieve for sure. Oh, it's, like I said, it's just totally it's 
totally, totally different culture and what they, the, the means and the, you know, how they're living down there and everything. I mean, I'm, I'm sure, you know, you, you want to, you want to be the mayor of the town, just stay, take a, take a Starlink down there. They'd be like, what, what, what is, sure. you know, internet and the phone calling and all that stuff now. Right. I, I don't think it's, I don't, I don't know. We haven't been down there since then. Right. Uh, since these things have come, come to pass, but no, it's a, uh, it's definitely something that, that, um, you know, I'm really looking forward to is getting down, starting on the pause and coming this way. First time. I mean, there's, there's, I ain't missing that one for, that's for dang sure. No, it, it's funny. Cause I'm, I'm hoping to actually race it. So I'm, I'm weighing what are you, my, what are you racing in? uh, well, I have a few offers, right. And so I'm weighing my options right now. So nice. a, a 6,100 year class, I'm, I'm sure I'm not going to be as fast as you. That's I'm just going to be smiling. You know, you'll be like, what is this guy doing up in front of me? He looks like he's texty or something because I'm going to be smiling. Look at all, look at all the scenery, right? Like, yeah, this, you know, like I get offers to drive for different people in different classes. And I, and I, dude, honestly, like some of the best times I've had is racing, you know, with, with a small team and, you know, whatever vehicle it is, they, they have seven class 11 fives. Like I, I really enjoy I, I really enjoy it all. If it if it ends up being a trophy truck or sixty one hundred, that's great too, you know. Right. But um, yeah, it's it's interesting because like I thought a lot about uh, this particular race coming up, and I think it's going to be really special. And I'm looking forward actually to the drama. You know what I mean? Because like you know, like obviously Bryce had a great drive at this last one, no problems. You know, really and. You know, mad respect to him. In fact, I was talking to somebody, I was talking to Ivan. And so he just matched Ivan's record for the most Baja 500 wins. So he wins one more and he's literally he's beat Ivan Stewart, which I think that's a pretty big deal, deal, right? Absolutely. So, um, you know, mad props to, you know, Menzies, like in, you know, yes, they are spending quite a bit of money, but that's one thing I will say as a, as a fan and as a promoter, I, I appreciate that, you know, like these guys who come in and spend money in our sport, <clears throat> I really appreciate it. You know, they could, <clears throat> they could go spend it in golf or offshore boat racing or whatever they want to. And they come spend it in our sport and we welcome it. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, I think it's, I think it's really cool, but yeah, I just, I started thinking about the sections, like what section do I really want to drive? Right. And that Southern section, La Paz to Loretto, um, you know, and really over up and over the mountain. Cause I hate that mountain. One of the scariest yeah. things yeah. I ever had to do was drive a pre-runner over that mountain. I couldn't see a thing. It was all hood. And the whole time I'm like, I can't afford this pre-runner. So don't roll it. Don't you don't roll it down the hills uh, with Garen Cadiente and uh-huh. brand new guys are beautiful pre-runner. Right. And, uh, uh, but that I like to, I like to scare myself, right? Like you get over it and you're like, son of a bitch. That was wild. I can't tell you how many stories that I have down at Baja where it's like, that was wild. How did that even, I mean, this, this race alone, right? I, we didn't know. I, I, I was worried, not worried, but we're t- obviously worried about do I guess our class right looking at the time splits and things like that I wasn't really focusing is the word on on the overall and you know we finished fifth 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 physical we went through I think it was something like 42 cars and at the time I didn't know I you know we were just driving and uh you know this this trophy truck spec class with the amount of you know the night before the race I'm kind of going over you know we have we have the Starlink so we're able to get time splits and things like that via text and there's I don't know some something like almost forty trucks and there's there's really seven or eight that could do yeah they could win at any any time right so I I put a star down by those guys' names and and gave it to the crew uh, we have two guys that do time splits for us and right around mile two hundred we're coming into Borrego and I go hey what's time splits well just to let you know he says every every name with a star next to it is within one minute. Oh, great. You know, yeah. it's, it's, that's, that's how competitive this yeah. class is. And, uh, and then from there we, you know, the rest, the rest of the race, we just were, 
since we started in the front there, we kind of were able to gap, you know, with different cars in between us and, sure. and the field that, you know, we were like, as you're cutting through the trophy right, trucks, right. And they, you know, obviously, you know, those, those vehicles hold up the, the guys in the back, right. Especially the guys that are fast that are starting in, 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 in the back back, which that's a whole other conversation, whether where, 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 and what's appropriate. I mean, as far as the specs and where they should start with ones and trophies and legends and stuff like that. But, uh, no, but it's a, a it was it was a it was a great race. We we started, you know, the, obviously there's some all wheel drives that had some issues. You know, what I mean, it wasn't just like, you know, our driving. It was, you know, several things that that had to take but into, that's, into, into place, right? Because you had Tavo and you had yeah, and um, Pudi and you had, you know, those those guys are guys are going to be up there in the front. Yeah, you know, they're not, you know, the the, the all wheel drive the 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 list of competitive guys that could win i feel like last year you know you had you had bryce and you had you know luke dan is doing yeah. an awesome job of getting himself up to speed and he actually won one and now you have you know a couple of these teams that i i was shocked that they pulled the, the trigger on all you know mason all will drive and they're going to be right there with with these guys for yeah. sure so mitch why is this bike so drippy? It's our 23 race bike. We can start up front, work our way to the back. Bones can tell you about the suspension. The rear shock is one of the most critical parts of the bike. Pegs with the titanium mounts. Kashima coating here. And a gravity lightweight battery. Young's modulus. Horse and a half. Works, Works chassis lab. More tie than a space shuttle. Really? I might need that repeated. This thing slaps. Slaps. Oh, you should have told me that earlier. It's it's interesting though, because like I think the problem, well I know the problem because we I was talking to Mason about it, um, is the talent pool. Like we don't have enough guys to prep four wheel drives. Uh, we don't have enough guys to you know chase. Like we need more guys. You know more. You know, we'll welcome women too. But um, yeah, it's it's interesting. You know to see how things are developing now. Where the where the flaws are because it's like. You know, I spending quite a bit of time with the McMillans. One of the things that I learned from them is like, yeah, prep important, but your game plan, especially at a thousand. Oh man, right? so game much, so much that goes into the it. logistics and the game plan of it. Like that's a whole thing on it. So and they they really got they really got it down. I'm really really fortunate to be friends with Luke, Dan, and and Mark. He gave me the blue book. You know, and, yeah. and what an awesome family, right? You talk about people that are that are in our sport, doing you know, spending the money. You know what I mean, and more importantly, like it's it's really cool to see that family, right? Because they even have they. I mean, talk about their roots and how deep they they're involved. Yeah. As a family, clear back in the Corky days, and and you know, like I said, I I saw Mark from the back of the station wagon coming up on me at 100 yeah. miles an hour. You know, I mean, that was him. It, yeah. It, it, it's it, it it's super super cool. But no, those guys, you know, the the amount of the planning, their team, their, uh, you know, the father-in-law. Now the father-in-law runs the shop, Roger, yep. you know, which is all, 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 all the more reason. Now it's, you know, even more of that much of a family, you know, uh, effort. It's, uh, they, they, they take it and they, they have it, the race shop, they have it right there where they do all their, you know, their real estate, you know, yep. in the offices where they do their real estate. Right? Yeah. Same kind of thing with me where it's like they're able to go and, you know, peek on peek in, in on on what what the guys are working on and making sure things are, you know, being prepped and in changes and all that stuff going the right way. But um, it's 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 a uh, it's it's really exciting to see. You know, and that's kind of you know what I want to do with my son is you know my my dad and my uncle were into it. You know, then then you know I got into it. We're 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 going to keep the keep it going here as long as we can. You know what I mean. Uh, is, is, and stay stay as competitive as long as we can, and then then the torch will be passed on to my son. And you know, it's it's uh, these kid these these guys. I'll, I'll use the McMillans as an example, right? It's obviously clearly in their blood. Like it, as much as you can you can practice. I mean, yes, you can get good at anything you do, but there's there's some guys that you know they come into the sport with money, and I mean the proof's in the pudding, right? You can have all the money in the world, but unless you have the talent. You know you're not gonna you're not gonna you know do as do as good as these other guys and it's cool to see you know the the mcmillans and you know guys like that where it's yeah. like you know 
they, generation they got it. generations well, of, of talent and you know and again because i've spent quite a bit of time with them and like it's became apparent to me that this was by design from Corky, right? This was a way he figured out, like, regardless of what happens in their business and their life, everybody's going to come together and race. And then, you know, for me to see the relationship in the beginning that Corky, I'm sorry, that Scott and Andy had, you know, like I, when I was 20, you know, 18, I was not hanging out with my dad. Right. You know what I mean? And like, we didn't have something like that in common, you know, and, and I was, you know, of the attitude of like, hey, my parents, you know, whatever, they're cool. It's all good. But like, they don't know shit. I know. Right. shit. You know what I mean? That <laughs> that kid attitude. And to see this like relationship between Scott and Andy, like they were best friends. Right. They were calling each other like, hey, what about this and this and this and this? And so for a father and son to be able to have a relationship like that through off-road racing, I'm like, okay, this you, is You just said it, it, it's it's one of those things, you know, when, when you get older and, you know, I'm getting definitely older, right? And in your dad, there's not a lot of things you can, sports that is, or hobbies that you can create and have available to be like, son, come race with me. Right. And go spend a week with them. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not like, Son, you want to go golfing on a Friday? Well, not, hey, that, that's a couple hours. Not just that, but, like, it's also a thing where, like, he can't be looking at the phone. Right. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, he's got to be <laughs> He's got to be full attention to what you're doing and fully engaged. So I think that that becomes or has become even more important in this day and age. Oh, no, for sure. You know what I mean? We can go into the whole, you know, nobody's parenting right in the world right, yeah. thing. But, like, you know, it, it is what it is. But I, I think, you know, off-road racing, you know, I'm really proud to be a part of it, to play a part in it and to, to help shepherd it forward. I see what it does for families. I see what it does for people. Like, you know, I said this the other day to Sal. Uh, it's like one of my favorite things about this is like this, you know, this idea that you're going to go to war. Right. And you're going to drag your friends and your family to war and you're going to learn about yourself. You're going to learn about them. But at the finish line, you know, being able to greet those racers at the finish line and they're like smiling and they've unlocked something inside their DNA that oh, for sure. that you you can only do by stress, like by flight or fight. Right. Right. And often and it, sometimes it's not even all about winning. Just like you said, yeah. just finishing. Like, yeah. People have no idea how hard it is to finish yep. an off-road race, especially a Baja 1000. You know, a Baja 4, there's a lot that goes into it. Yes. And so that accomplishment, that feeling when you finish, you know, and, and cross the finish line, it's indescribable. You know? do, do you think that that's translated into more drive in your business? You know what? I, I think so. I think so because of the challenge you know what i mean it's 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 like just like i said it's it's not it's not easy kind of like my business is not easy it's in mexico it's in the united states i'm only one guy and i gotta manage both things you know what i mean I, i'm the i'm the i'm the manufacturer i'm we, you know we do the cells in el cajon and uh and we we make a, a product that's not easy to make so um you know with all those factors just like baja you have all these factors you have you have your prep you have your planning, you have your car, you have bad luck, you have good luck, you have booby traps. You, I mean, you got it all. And like, like I said, when you finish the finish line, you, when you finish a race and you cross the finish line after all of, all of that stuff, it's, it, it's very rewarding. It feels, feels like nothing that I can describe. Nice. Well, on that note, I think we uh, I think we ran over time, but it's all good, man. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, absolutely. Great Thanks having for having you. me on the show. It was a and pleasure con- as always. And congrats on your your ball five hundred win and uh, being points champ or being lead in points. And I'm excited to see you go uh, close that out at the thousand. Well, we're gonna cross our fingers and just keep keep on giving her hell, and uh, we'll see what happens. Awesome. Thanks, brother. Thank you.